What are the steps that you need to take to write a great essay? That's what we're going to talk about today. Hi there, thank you for checking out my channel. Thank you for clicking on this video. If this is the first video that you're watching for my channel, I make educational and motivational content. So if you don't want to miss any of my new uploads, don't forget to hit subscribe and hit that bell icon. Now, like I said in the intro, Kanina, we're going to talk about how to write a great essay. Now, before we get started, let me just uh, introduce the sponsor for this video. This video is made possible by our friends from Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform where you can access a lot of courses taught by experts from all around the world. You can join the hundreds of thousands of people who are signed up right now learning new things dabbling, diving into stuff that they're interested in. And makakasama nyo rin ako because I'm actually taking up a course right now on writing character-driven short stories on Skillshare. For less than $10 a month, you can have access to all of these courses, learn from experts, and join a community of learners from all around the world. If you want to join Skillshare, there's actually a link to a free premium trial membership right here in so the description box below. And uh, you can join me and all of the learners who, again, as you always say, channel to never stop learning. All right? So again, thanks Skillshare for making this video possible. Let's dive into the topic natin for today. All right, so let's start with the very first step when you're writing your essay. The first step that you need to take is this. You have to decide the kind of essay that you're writing. And yes, there are multiple types. If you're taking up writing ngayon in one of your courses or one of your subjects in school, you probably already talked about a bunch of them. There's your narrative essay, descriptive essay, expository essay, argumentative essay. But, okay, more than the types of essays, the first thing that you need to determine is ano yung purpose ninyo for writing your essay because your purpose will help you determine which kind of essay you will write. So, am I writing this just to explain something? So, siguro, okay na yung descriptive or expository. If I'm writing to convince someone about my own perspective, then this is going to be an argumentative essay. If it's going to be just storytelling about something that happened or a period in history, then you can choose to use your narrative essay. Now again, you really have to determine the purpose of your essay. The entire series na ito will start with peace para mas madling tandaan. So again, first determine your purpose. Okay? Answer the question, why am I writing this essay? And then pick the kind of essay that you will write. Now, step number two is all about prospecting. Ano yung prospecting, no? There's this um, mental image that you can think about when you talk about prospecting. Sa paghahanap ng gold, sa gold rush before, they used the word prospector. Para sa mga tao who find yung gold in riverbeds to determine kung may gold dun sa area na yon. So, ang prospecting is a lot like looking for information related to the paper or the essay that you're writing. Dito na papasok yung research. Okay? So, you really have to gain a lot of information about the topic. I encourage you to build your uh, range ng data or ng information na mas bigger than yung hinihingi dun sa essay ninyo. For example, if you're going to write an argumentative essay, so which form of government would be great for the Philippines? I encourage you to not just look at democratic forms of government kasi democratic tayo ngayon. I encourage you to look at other options. Bakit? Kasi the way that you can form a good argument would be for you to state why you feel that democracy works and also state counterclaims or counterattacks dun sa possibility na may ibang mga... Uh, forms of government that can work. So again, you really have to have a huge range of information. So much information and more than you think you need. Okay? I remember when I was writing essays or end papers back when I was in college, I used to fill my bed with articles, with research papers, with uh, a lot of clippings related to the topic that I'm working on. At kasi kung mas marami kang information, mas marami kang options, and marami kang pwedeng isite. Maraming mga people who struggle with including citations or um, sa thesis yung kanilang review of related literature. Because wala silang mga nahanap na literature na pwede nilang isite. Pero if you really spend a lot of time prospecting, you will get that range ng mga reference materials ninyo. 
Okay, so again, second step, prospecting. You have to do your research, gather information. More information that you feel you need. Okay? Now, the third step is this. You have to choose your perspective. Now, it's not just yung position ninyo, if this is an argumentative essay, but you're also going to have to choose if you're going to use a first-person point of view, second-person point of view, or a third-person point of view. Okay? So again, we talked about point of views na in another video. So if you haven't seen that video yet, you can click nyo na lang dito sa i button if you're watching on YouTube or you can check the description box for that video. Again, yung point of view ninyo sa inyong essay will help a lot pagdating sa pagpili ninyo na sentence construction later and also in picking a point of view that works best for the kind of essay that you're presenting. For example, if this is a purely descriptive essay, Okay, it's very technical or expository uh, essay. You can choose to use a third-person point of view. If it's an argumentative essay, if it's a narrative essay, and you want to be as immersive as possible, then you can use the first-person point of view. Again, all of these things you have to decide before you even start writing an essay. Now, a lot of kids, they ask me, hindi ko po alam ko na yung susulat ko sa paper ko, hindi ko alam ko saan ako magsisimula. Every time I pull up yung aking text um, program, whether word man yan or anything, I would see the blinking cursor judging me kasi hindi ko alam ko na yung susulat ko. And honestly, kaya hindi nila alam yung susulat nila, it's because they haven't done all of these steps leading up to kung saan ka magsusulat. If you notice, nasa third step na tayo, pero hindi pa tayo nag-uusap ng kung anong isusulat ninyo dun sa mismo paper. So again, a lot of the prep work happens before the actual writing. Okay, so again, choose your perspective. Choose what perspective works best for your paper. And if in case you need to pick a side, dahil argumentative yung paper, or that ito ay in response to a question na posted by your professor or your teacher, you have to choose your side. Okay, choose your perspective. Step number four, okay, you have to plan. Now, yung plan, dito napapasok yung writing your outline. Now, let me tell you this. The more outlines you use, the easier it will be for you in the future, not right now ha, in the future to write a paper without an outline. Ano ibig sabihin ko noon? Um, if you are just starting out sa pagsusulat, mas maganda if you start out by using outlines muna. Kasi ibig sabihin, hindi mo pa gamay yung structure or flow ng isang essay. There's nothing shameful about writing an outline before writing a paper. A lot of Great writers, hanggang ngayon, you can ask journalists, you can ask uh, working authors, published authors, and they still use outlines. Minsan lang kasi, di ba, yung may mga students who would say na, outline, hindi na kailangan yan, basta type ka lang ng type. Pero if you really want, again, to write a great essay, that's what we're talking about today, there's nothing shameful about using an outline. I-outline nyo na yung kung ano yung mga arguments ninyo. If it's going to be a narrative essay, kung ano yung mga steps or ano yung pinaka-story that you're writing, okay? And then, if you have an outline, it's going to be easier for you to do the next step, which is to fill it in, okay? So again, you have to plan. When it comes to writing an argumentative essay, this is also where you sort your arguments. Mas maganda if you still tell a story using your arguments. For example, going back to the topic that I raised kanina, if democracy is the best form of government for the Philippines. And again, ano to ha? All your perspectives aside, this is not the goal for this video. We're just talking about a sample outline. If your argument is that it is, then you can look at history, okay? It's a great way to start your argument because again, history happens before. So my cohesiveness pa rin, my flow pa rin, and very organic pa rin, that you start in the past before you move to the future. So do your research. How was it dun sa pre-colonial Philippines? Democratic din ba yung form of government? Is there some form of government pero was democracy still um, patterned or at least at least mirrored dun sa form of government na yon? Meron bang movement sa social hierarchy? Or was it fixed much like yung caste system in India? So again, these things you have to look at. Start off with that and then move on dun na lang sa natural na order ng history. Or if you want, you can structure your arguments depende sa kung ano yung strong na argument. Start off with something strong, follow it up, and then end with something strong. Diba? Para at least maganda yung flow ng inyong paper. That is why the outline or the plan works. Okay? Uh, parang kung maga sa video games din. Diba? When you're doing your moves or combinations sa Tekken or any other game, you really have to know kung kailan mo gagamitin yung pinaka 
powered up na move mo. Okay? Kasi if you give it up too early, tapos hindi mo siya na-recharge in time for the last few seconds of the game, pwede kang matalo. So, ganun din yung kailangan na process when it comes to writing your plan or writing your outline. Okay? Now, we go to step number five. This is where you actually do the writing. Okay? This is where you pen your paper. Ano yung ibig sabihin nun? Lalagyan mo na ng laman or if you fill in mo la yung mga parts ng inyong outline. You write the introduction, you write the paragraph talking about your first argument, or you talk about the first event if you're talking about a series of events. You fill it, you use whole sentences. This is where you start writing everything. My quick tip muna would be, especially if you have the time pa to do this, which I encourage na sana ganun, no? Sana pag binigay yung writing exercise, hindi nyo naman hihintayin hanggang night before bago kayo magsulat ng essay. Uh, mas maganda, if you do some, ano muna, parang free na type ng writing when you're filling in yung mga parts ng inyong outline. Don't be so strict with yourself when it comes to choosing words or punctuations or anything like that. Basta lamanan nyo lang yung bawat point. Okay? Bakit? Kasi yung pagko-correct niyan ng inyong grammar, ng punctuation, ng capitalization will come later. Because again, it doesn't end after you finish writing your paper or writing your essay dun sa first run. Ang step 6 natin, you have to polish your paper. You have to polish your essay. You have to revise. Okay? Um, uh, there is this phrase no, or quote na sabi nila, editing daw is half of writing. Or, um, ibig sabihin nun, if you write pero you don't edit, kulang na kulang yung output mo. Okay? And very important ito. This is where you can start tweaking things. Okay, itong line na to, itong sentence na to, medyo masyadong mahaba. May run on. May comma supplies. Dito nyo na siya i-revise. Okay? Now, bakit ko sinasabi ito? A lot of students, a lot of people, I would say, no, people, kasi kahit sa trabaho, kailangan nyo pa rin magsulat ng memos and papers and reports. What they do usually kapag kailangan nalang magsulat is that they just write. Okay? And then whatever they come up with, they submit it. But if you really want to write a great essay, a great report, a great paper, you really have to edit your work. Now, and again, a bit of encouragement, I would tell you this. The more that you follow this structure, kapag nakasulat na kayo ng sabihin natin, 100 essays following itong step-by-step -step procedure na ito, baka, baka, ha, hindi ko sinasabing ano, absolute ito, no? baka darating ang time na you wouldn't have to go through the entire process tediously kasi nga, again, na-imbibe or naging part na siya ng pagkataon ninyo. So, your editing will happen while you're writing. Pero if you're not at that point yet, dahil kulang ka pa sa experience, I really suggest that you follow this flow. Alright? So again, let's run down the entire thing. You start with your purpose. What is your purpose? Choose the kind of essay that you're going to use. Do your prospecting. Do your research. Gather all the information that you feel you need and more. Okay? And then third step, you have to choose your perspective. Is it going to be in the first person point of view, second person point of view, third person point of view? Anong classing argument, anong classing side ang pipiliin ninyo if you need to choose a side. And then fourth, you have to do your outline or plan. Plan, plan, plan. Because if you have an outline, hindi ka na mauubusan na sasabihin. Okay? And sasabihin ko yun sa inyo, I know a lot of people and the kids who comment on my videos tell me na, paano ko po papahabain yung essay ko? Pa paano ko pahahabain yung paper ko? But if you have an outline, if you, you follow these steps, hindi niya magiging problema. This is my experience, ha? And comment na lang yung mga ate and kuya who will see this video na pareho yung problema. Hindi nyo magiging problema na kulang yung masasabi ninyo. Ang magiging problema nyo eventually would be nandun na ako sa limit. So, sabi ng t-shirt ko 500 words lang, pero nasa 800 yung words ng essay ko. So, na I have to trim the fat. Bakit? Kasi nga, again, meron kang plan. And then, step number five, put your pen to paper, pen your essay, write it, but don't be overly strict with yourself. Again, struggle yan ng iba, kaya walang maisulat kasi masyado silang strict sa punctuation nila or sa prepositions nila at first. So, wag muna kayo maging masyadong strict kasi masasolusyonan niya nung step number six, which is polish your essay. You have to revise, edit. If you can get someone who can read through your work and give you comments, mas maganda pa. Okay? Now, here's a suggestion na ibibigay ko sa inyo. Uh, if you have a classmate who's really good when it comes to English, or a teacher when you were in grade school, or in an earlier year, if you can build a relationship with them and get them to 
maybe read through your work and then give you just a couple of comments. Again, being gracious with them kasi alam niyo naman na busy rin sila. Or kung may ate or kuya ka sa bahay na pwedeng magbasa ng work ninyo, then you can approach them and tell them na parang baka pa rin niyo pong i-criticize yung paper ko. Tingnan niyo po kung may mga mali and I would be really open to your advice. Now, that would only be possible if you actually work on your essay earlier than the submission time. Okay? Now, this is a bit of a parang personal sharing na ano. Uh, sometimes I get emails or messages from kids who are going to submit a paper the next day. Sasend nila sa akin the night before. Sasabihin nila sa akin, Coach, ano, pakibasa na to, tapos paki, pakicomment na ng mabilis kasi bukas na yung submission. Or kailangan ko na submit in an hour. So, parang ako, paano ko yun gagawin? Kulang na sa time. So, if you have more time, mas maganda. Kasi may possibility pa na ma-check pa siya ng iba. Okay? So, again, be kind, be gracious, be open to criticism. That is how you write a great essay. I hope you learned something here. Kung gusto ninyo ng mas, di- mas deep dive into the parts, or if you want me to uh, write a, an essay with you, as in, maybe suggest a topic that uh, you want me to write about, uh, you can leave comments in the comment section sa baba. If you want part 2 ng series na ito where I talk about the kinds of essays, let me know in the comments para tingnan natin kung ano yung uunahin natin next. And again, thank you so much to Skillshare for making this video possible. Again, if you want to get a taste of how it is to learn on Skillshare, you can click on the link in the description box and in the comment section sa baba. It's also pinned there. And join me and hundreds of thousands of other people who are enjoying the thousands, tens of thousands of courses that are available right now on Skillshare. It's not just about writing. There's courses about web design, graphic design, arts, sculpting, basically anything creative that you also want to learn, not just for your um, for yourself, but also for your future, possibly, to learn new skills, you can do that on Skillshare. Again, for just $10 a month, you can sign up for a premium membership. And if you want to taste, click on the link below. All right? Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. This is actually part of our Study Hacks series. If you want to watch the other videos in this series, you can click right here on the i button. The link will, to the playlist will also be in the description box below. And if you want to catch the next video, don't forget to hit subscribe and hit that bell icon. We have more videos coming up. All right? If you want to send a message to me directly, get to know kung paano natin uh, binibuild itong team na ito, you can message me on my Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash teamlaika. Thanks for watching, everyone. And as we always say in this channel, never stop learning. Aja, aja, kai niyan. See you in my next video. And bye for now. Thank you for watching until the end of the video. We actually have a few other videos on writing. So if you haven't seen that yet, ililink ko na lang dito sa gilid. Panoorin nyo na lang siya. And if you want to get to know me on a more personal level, I have a second channel, Laika Maravilla. You can click on the face right here to subscribe to that channel. Alright?